So we've worked through quite a few videos where we've made this little mall character and now it's time to, uh, after we've prepared it for print, now we want to actually print it. So I'm going to use this piece of software which is Chitterbox and I'm going to slice it up ready for 3D printing on my Piopoli Phenom. <laughs> So this is Chitterbox and the first thing you want to do is set it for your printer. Now mine is a Piopoli Phenom and if you come over here on the right and you hit settings you can generally find your printer there. You can add it with add new printer and all of my printers were there so I've got an Elegoo Mars Pro, a Piopoli Phenom and an Elegoo Saturn. These are all resin machines. So you, um, you don't really want to mess with any of this unless you know what you're doing. So you can put the type of resin in. You can change the print settings, the amount of uh, curing that you'll have per layer and things like that. But if you're new to this and you're just getting into it, then I would literally just leave it to default. At most, I would put in the type of resin if, if you've got a different, um, or if you know specifically what resin you've got. Um, I've been using this machine for a few years and I've never bothered. If you know what you're doing with that, then you can you can really tweak it to to maximize um, the best settings. Uh, I really am not a tinkerer and I just want the output, so I, I've always left it to to the default settings, uh, and I always set it to as as high as I can in terms of um, the resolution. But everybody's printer is different, so set it to your printer, and you'll see as you change it, you can see the different. Uh, uh, sizes of the um, the print beds or the the the, the vats actually, and um, so I set it to mine, which is a huge one, and just say yes. So that's now given us um, the, the the base plate to work on. I'm just using a mouse, and I'm using right click and spinning round. If I want to pan around, I'm just using the um, middle mouse wheel and just holding down. And to zoom in and out, I just scroll the mouse wheel. So that's all of my movement and all that I'm going to need. And then I just want to bring my models in. Now, if you've done it um, uh, as per all of our other videos, your models will be scaled correctly. So they should look something like this. And because in Nomad we set everything to a scale in, in the previous videos, everything should come in at exactly the same size. Now, if, for example, it, it doesn't, and you haven't done that, and you haven't scaled it first, what might happen is this. So when you go and bring them in, which was open, and then you just select the ones that you've saved. If I bring all those in again, they're all gonna come in at this much smaller size. So I'll just bring them together to show you what I mean. So if you use ZBrush or certain other programs, the, the scaling is going to be off. And this is what you'll end up with is a really odd size. Now, bear in mind, each of these squares is one centimeter. So you can imagine, it doesn't take much to imagine that all of this is not going to be um, any use to you. Now, I'll just delete those little ones. But the way to deal with that is if you've brought them in and they are tiny like that, is hit this up here, which is select all. And then come over on the left hand side and you use these buttons here to scale them up. Now, if you've got lock ratio hit, hit, you can just basically go up and down proportionally. Uh, and that basically will keep every single part the same size, but scale it up. So you might have to do that um, if you haven't done it correctly. So I'll just put mine back to the size. Now, these are preset. These are the ones that we set in Nomad and that they're, they're absolutely spot on for what we what we want for, the, for this um, session. So. Let's take them bit by bit and I'll just use the mouse and I'll move things out of the way uh, while we talk about them. So we're going to change a number of things. Let's just take one. So we're going to work through this panel on the left. We're going to use this one here, which is we're going to be able to rotate it around its, its different axes and then we can get it orientated. Um, we're going to use this one. Uh, sorry, we're not going to use this one, which is scale but we are going to use this one to move it around the bed. So all of these different parts, are all we're going to really do is change the orientation and move them around. If we know the scale, the last thing we ever want to do is change the scale on any one of these parts independently, because then the head won't fit to the body or the hand won't fit to the body, something like that. So we try not to do that. So what we do want to do is we want to hollow them out and we want to uh, put holes in them um, for drain holes should they need it. So we'll bring them together just so as they're nearer together on the screen. 
and I come up to the top and I'm going to go to hollow and I use 2.3 mil walls and I just say start. And what that does, you can see down here at the bottom, it just calculates and it goes down the model, each model, and it's literally looking for um, where it can hollow them out. Now what I did there was I just had one selected and all it's done is it's hollowed out the, the selected one which is not what we want. So you have to select all with this button here and then run it on all of them at one go. Now it won't hollow out thin things, so it won't hollow out the saber, it won't hollow out the hand, but it will all hollow out the base, the body and the head. It won't hollow out the ears because you can see, I can use this slider now to show you what the slices are like. You can see here that the ears are still solid, but then going into the head, it's then an empty void, which is going to save you a lot of resin. And the same with the base there. As you get through the middle, you'll see it becomes you know, a, a complete um, uh, open void. But the hands and the lightsaber, nothing, they're going to be solid altogether. Now, once you've hollowed them out like that, what you need to do is add holes. So we want drain holes to allow the, the resin to drain as we're, as we're working. So you just go to the next one along, dig hole, make it something like a three or four mil hole, and then go add hole. And then you've got to find places to add the holes. So it, on a larger model, we can put it at the bottom of pegs like this, but this won't work. As you can see here, it says failed um, too deep to dig. So So there is no cavity in there for, for it to dig into so we'll actually make it a little bit smaller so we'll make it a three mil we'll go add hole now and what we'll do is we'll add the hole at the back of the the peg like that and as you can see there it's given us this this hole all the way through like that now you can do a couple of holes sometimes i do one top and one bottom but on this model i, I don't really need that i don't want to put a hole in the top um, to allow air out basically because it would it would affect what the model looks like so I'm going to leave the head with just that hole there but the body we can put a hole down through the middle here so that's in the in the base of oh, sorry in deep in the hole where the pegs gonna go and then I also like to put one underneath somewhere like that um, because it's underneath the, the the back you're not really going to see it anyway you could do it down under the feet you could get one down here if you want but you might find that there's no actual cavity there in the um in the legs so underneath the base of the back like that is a good place and the last one is the base and i like to do dig hole and make it bigger you can change it from circle to hexagon or square it really doesn't matter so let's make a big one and we'll cut a couple of hexagons in here so that says uh and not hollowed out because it's too deep so that means I was too close to the edge so if we come here you can see it's done it there and do another one here and another one here it really doesn't matter there I like to put a few in top and bottom because one if something's draining out of a hole it's good to have another hole to give it to make sure there's no air um, you know a pressure problem um, and sometimes I like to have several holes so that it's got plenty of places to drain out the excess and on the bottom of a, a base never really matters so and that's it really that's that's your hollowing and your hole digging done now what we've got to do is orientation so we're going to work through each piece so we unselect over here and we'll go through each piece one by one to to, to see what it needs so for the head let's get rid of this hollowing first of all with escape so for the head we want to rotate it so it's lying um, in a, a flat orientation like that so basically as it would be on the model but then we want to angle it back so what we want it to do is be like that and the reason we want that is we don't want any marks from the supports on any of the main features so we never want a face to have marks on it so when the supports are underneath, they'll all come up and underneath um, the, the peg, underneath the ears, but won't touch any of, any of this here, any of the facial features. And it also, because these are all pointing up, which is down if you think about it on a, on a 3D printer, on a resin printer, then there won't be any supports needed here. There might be one at the back here, and there might be one on here, and there definitely will be one or two on the ears. But overall, that's about right, a uh, right kind of orientation for that. Now with the body, same again, we want to roll it backwards 
and then it will come up through the arms without any supports and the supports will all be on the back and hopefully be fairly you know fairly minimal now because this has got like a texture on it you'll find that that you know that actually helps because it's not a smooth surface and when you break off the um, the prints uh, sorry the supports then you, you don't have as much to clean up on there and the last one is uh, or sorry the last big one is the base and with the base I would probably that the higher things are the longer they take to print and it doesn't matter if you fill this entire plate because one layer takes exactly the same amount of time so what you want to try and do is always minimize the height if you can so if we bring it like that it will be one amount of time if we bring it like that and then angle it up um, it, it will be a lot less time and because it's now equal or lower to than the highest piece forget this piece for now then that means that's absolutely fine so angle it as much as you can until it equals the height of the the highest piece there and then that would probably do it for that so that will get no marks on the surface whatsoever and then this one the uh, lightsaber will just drop it uh, oops done the wrong one there we'll drop it this way and then we'll rotate it over I keep getting the wrong one here so we'll rotate it over and what we want is we want it to be angled up but we want the hand back of the hand to be upwards so there's no marks on there as well now all the marks will be underneath along here so again you can afford to go as high as the as the highest piece so we'll go something like that and then that will work quite well for us and the last piece the last little hand um, it doesn't really matter with with this hand because he's such a small piece so we'll just put him over here out of the way now if you want to maximize the plate you might want to put quite a few things on here so I'm gonna put um, the head there the body there and bring these parts over here and what I might want to do is then go control C and control V and that drops me another hand another lightsaber like so and if it's if it's sticking out that's fine because we can rotate it another base another body and another head like so and obviously because we've got that we can probably do one more and I'm filling the plate in its entirety so we'll see where that's gone over there and then we can now move these around and we can adjust everything so it fits all of these on and if it doesn't fit like that what you can do is rotate it so let's just rotate this one get the rotation on just looking at the angle as I'm going around so we can rotate him round this way so that from the top he's not red so if, he, if he's outside if he goes red like that it means he's outside the, the, the scale of our base and we can't have that and what you can also do is up here you can just do clone current model and that'll just give you the same as control C and control V so these are quite big so I'm just gonna have to adjust them around the plate so that they fit perfectly like that and now we've got the saber that we need one more of so I might have to rotate that a little bit so I accidentally keep doing that rotate that a little bit bring that one round and then uh, you can actually auto this you can hit an auto function and it will it will give you a um, an automated version of it but I like to pack it like this I like to do it as I as I want to do it um, and then I know that the plates fully maximized um, and, and you know you're getting your bang for buck really on here so there you go there's a full plate of the little uh, mall character the mall Grogu and uh, nothing's overlapping that I can see it won't cause any problems if it is just take a few more minutes to adjust it and, you know move it around you, you, you might think that it looks good in a row like that but actually you might find that it's better like something like this and then maybe rotate this guy around like so and then this one around like so and then you absolutely know you're fitting them all in so being in a line isn't always the best. It's, it's like uh, for anyone that does UV unwrapping, it can be like that. So, you know, packing it is 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 a little bit of an art, really. So just making sure it all fits. Now, you've got them all laid out. They've all got holes in, so they're all ready to print. But we need some supports. So we need to select all. And then we're going to go over to supports. 
and I am super lazy here, so I hit light and I do all, and it gives me a light support across the whole of every mod. And you can see it processing here, so it can take a minute. You can roll around while it's doing it if, if, if that helps you. And then you'll see it processing now, and what it's doing is it's going through each of these pieces and it's calculating how to do a support for you, and then it will add supports to each one of them. And there you go, you've got supports on every one of the models. Now, what I tend to do then is look underneath, and it shows you um, that the red areas are where the supports are gonna be. Um, and it, what I like to do is go now to heavy, and I add a couple of heavies to every single model. So I literally go in, and it, you can see these pegs being added, and it's just, adding them and that makes sure that these absolutely stick to the base the reason i like lights is because they don't damage the um uh, surface of the model much at all so what, what that means is that that you're um there's not much cleanup to do but the problem with lights is they don't always stick to the the plate as, as well as 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 the larger more heavier support so if you put lights for nearly everything and then just add quite a few, uh, two or three to each model of your heavies. Um, that means that you will get at least one heavy one really adhered well to the plate. That's my logic um, and lots of different 3D print people will tell you differently. And I suggest that you take your time with your specific model to learn any specifics of support in for that model. Now, I'm gonna be honest, with the Piopoli Phenom, I don't get any fails. So I've been very lucky with this machine. I get a lot of fails with, um, that, that, that's Piopoli Phenom with Chitterbox. I do get a lot of fails on um, the Mars machines and the older form machine that I used to have. Um, so again, it's very specific to you. So this is quite a generic uh, a way of doing it. And if you really want to do it, um, you know specific to you you can do these supports by hand and you can reduce them a lot if you if you're really really good at that but that's that's a whole skill in itself so back over to this button here and then what we do is we just say slice and what that does is it works its way through and it gives you the slices per layer so if i just um if i move this across you should be able to see what each layer will look like. So if I go all the way to the bottom, you can see it happening there on the left. So the first thing it'll lay down is all of these squares, and that, that's the first uh, thing that will print onto the um, the plate. And then it'll come up through the, the, the supports, these are the dots that are coming up, and then it will start slowly printing anything that is, that is the model. So you can see the thicknesses of the, this is the, the base here, these are the heads so it'll do a solid ear and it'll come up through the bodies like this um, and it'll come all the way up through like that and then it will print right to the end of the top and that's how the slicing has worked and then the last thing to do is just hit save so in here you can just save it wherever you want so for example i save it um, on a uh, memory stick and then just stick it in the machine from there so let's just do that let's save it let's stick it on the printer and then we'll see what comes out at the other end. So rather than show you the, the full plate, um, I, I've done about 10 different versions of this since we started this beginner series. So I thought it would be good to show you this, which is a, a larger version. This is the, the, the big one that we've used in the video. Um, so this is instead of having six or seven of them on one plate, we've just got one body, one head, um, and what, you know one base and a saber. Now, as you can see, um, I've had to put this vertically um, and you can see that now there will be marks on one side of the face much more than the, than if it was just on the back um, but that's that's what you have to do if you you know if you're going to print really really large like this you know you want it will be a lot taller therefore it's a lot longer to print um, but as you can see the quality is exceptional um, and and certainly the amount of uh, supports there are wouldn't be a problem for cleaning it up with a model th this sort of size it wouldn't be a problem on the rocks it's definitely not a problem on the um the, the body because it's got like a hessian look which is quite bumpy anyway um so there was very very little cleanup overall for this kind of model so once you've got it off like that it's a case of taking it and then cracking it off the plate and actually seeing how you can remove all of the the supports and, and it comes off, certainly with this machine, the Piopoli Phenom, 
it comes off incredibly easy as you're about to see so it uh, it actually lifted off the plate a little bit there which can be quite that could have been quite dangerous that could have dropped into the vat and ruined it but watch how simply that they, 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 they just crack off that there's, there's hardly any pressure at all um, and then I give them a wipe before I ever clean them in isopropanol and um, so the plate again quick wipe just check it all over make sure that all the main supports are off you can see there there's tiny little supports in the inside the cracks so I, I you know I, I crack them off um, just by hand um, and then put it on one side you can see the holes in that the hand comes off with a simple pull uh, pulling them off the hardest bit is getting it off the plate and I just do that with a um, just with a, a spatula so here you can see me pulling off the um, the main body and they're quite robust when you've printed them you can see the bobbly marks on the bottom of the feet there um, that's what you're dealing with when you've when you've got support sometimes so I'd have to use a tool in there to get the, the, the supports out from inside the arm there is actually a fail there on the arm on this particular one uh, but nothing that you can't clean up um, the holes are very evident now this is a bigger piece so there are holes in the feet of this one whereas in the one that we've done in this video we didn't have, it was quite a small one and lots of them on a plate but as you can see there the head's super super clean there's a couple of lines that you can see so that might need addressing once we've cleaned it up and, and seen um, you know what it's like uh, and, and as it happens I, with, with this particular one that was a little bit of a problem so I had to rub that down and you can see where that sometimes that happens where you, where you might get a, a, like a blip in the printing but um, as, as you can see even without any cleaning up there there's you know the, the, the head goes in it, it should have been a little bit looser than that but so I had to rub it down a bit more um, the hands fit nicely in either to be honest with you in, in, in left or right although it would look stupid having the thumbs on the wrong side but there you go it assembles quite nicely into the into the figure that it eventually becomes and then next job is to give it a clean and then once you've cleaned it in isopropanol um, this is what it looks like so this is with a blast of primer um, it's dried for a while I normally dry it for a couple of days and I, and I bake it to cure the UV fully so as you can see there I made a bit of a mistake with the neck I hadn't made it thin enough so I had to rub it down a little bit more than I like to um, and the same with the hand there so I'm just fixing that with a little bit of uh, filler and then rubbing it down um, so the more work you do on the pegs the better that will be um, so you know be prepared to take your time with that you can see how it carried the pattern of the hessian on the on the clothing quite nicely and the rocks carried all of the textures that came out of Nomad. So overall, really, really happy with it. Uh, it was a lovely piece. Uh, it's been lovely um, doing this uh, design as a beginner series. So if you can get to this point, you know, hopefully you could get to the point where you can airbrush it like I have on the left there. Um, this little guy was, was, was the smaller size that you saw in this video. Um, but it's quite an achievement to get your first character out like this. And even if you don't have a printer, because they are expensive and they are messy, you know, you, you can easily get these done by a bureau or, you know, if you get into the, the 3D print community and, you know, make some friends and offer some models, you, you know, you, you will soon get someone who will help you out with that. So I hope you've enjoyed this series and um, I look forward to seeing what you make with your own um, version of Nomad on a 3D printer. I really hope you're enjoying these videos and this is coming to the end of this beginner series now so please give the videos a, a like because it helps other people to get in front of this kind of content and if you like it enough to give it a like then why not subscribe to the channel and we can uh, we can share our videos with you when they're released every week have a great week everyone